in part what you're doing is what kind of the new environmental history is doing as well. So how easy did you find just this rereading of established material for a new with a new set of eyes is? I, I, it's kind of everywhere. Right. right. I mean, it's 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 one of those um, kind of subtle subtle changes that you realize. Oh, it's it's a, it's a habit of of paying attention to the source base. Once mm -hmm. you start seeing references to sound, it's hard to unsee those. Right. right? It becomes you realize that you know uh, that that language is full of intentional and unintentional sensory cues, mm -hmm. uh, often geared towards vision, but not exclusively. You, you mentioned that you're using. Where it's, it is about prison camps, and you're using Andersonville where we are, you're using um, the prisons in the Richmond area, you're using a little bit on the northern prisons. What made you decide to go for the prison camps rather than, say, like the camp where the soldiers stay in winter times or the campaign trail or a battlefield? What made the prison especially interesting for your for this type of study you're studying? In, in part because it's it's overlooked. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's, you know, historians uh, have preferred writing about soldiers who are not captured. Right. Um, and political pun intended, I suppose. Well, sure. Um, but it, it's it's also it, it, it's a it's a different experience than than camp. It's a different experience mm -hmm. than hospital. That's not to say that there is not overlap. There right. certainly is. Right. The and it, you think of of these sensory experiences of the Civil War era as being on a continuum, right? The hospitals and prisons and contraband camps mm -hmm. too are not particularly far apart at right. times. Um, and certainly there there could be and there should be a dialogue at some point about the future and how, how this how all these these tie together. Um, I found this to be as large of a topic as I could take on uh, mm -hmm. while feeling like I was I, I, I was uh, staying true to a to a, a similar type of, of sources and a similar type of, sure. of experiences. So, you know, I, I tr try to avoid, I, I didn't want to write just about Andersonville. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I certainly try, I, I use as many prisons as I have the sources to bring them in, right? And that's, that, that, that uh, again, that's part of the, the organization. And one of the reasons for that organization is that, you know, th there's not, prisoners don't go to just Andersonville. Like they start off at Belle Isle right, or, mm -hmm. or Libby Prison. They end up at Andersonville. If they survive, they go on to Florence or Savannah or Charleston or Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's this kind of this constant kind of churning of, mm -hmm. of experiences and, 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 and travel and movement. So it didn't make sense to focus on place either. Um, and, and the source base works out for that well too because there's not a centralized archive for for this. So I visited you know, 30, 40 archives, sometimes mm -hmm. reading one diary, you know, that, that yeah. may or may not have um, uh, useful information. Um, and and that was okay because it was, it's a book about how did prisoners ruminate on their experiences right. uh, in captivity and, and, and to some extent beyond, uh, but mostly in, in, those, uh, in those warriors in those spaces.